When most people think about computers, they think about their desktop or maybe even their smartphone. The physical size of computing technology continues to shrink, and engineers at the University of Michigan have actually developed computers on a millimeter scale. So how will these tiny computers influence our digital destiny? We are here with Dennis Sylvester at U of M's nice Fishbowl, the largest and busiest of the campus computing sites. All right, well, thanks for meeting me here. Sure. Are the computers that your team is developing at Michigan actually the world's smallest computers? Uh, we believe so. Uh, we've not seen uh, anything remotely close to that really reported. Cubic centimeter scale has been reported. Um, we're looking at cubic millimeter scale, which is uh, 10 cubed or 1,000 times smaller than that. Computers are really just a set of capabilities or features, memory or storage, input-output capabilities, and uh, our systems have the same capabilities as these larger systems. Maybe not as high performance as those systems, but obviously with other benefits like their size, their power consumption, etc. What are the capabilities of your computers? Well, they have wireless communication capability, of course computation and data storage, and they also have a number of sensing modalities. They can sense pressure, they can sense temperature, and actually we even have an imager uh, on the system so we can take uh, uh, pictures or video or, or do motion detection. We're working on systems where you implant these into the body, for instance into tumors, to measure pressure inside the tumor because that's a really good indicator of whether chemotherapy is working early on. We're looking at other environmental sensing applications, surveillance, because of the imaging capabilities, the types of things that you could use this for, a lot of people like myself haven't even imagined yet. So we actually design the chips here with our students. When we handle them in the lab, we indeed use little tweezers. We actually have different layers that we stack on top of each other. And each layer is a little chip that has a particular function. So one layer, for instance, is the radio. Another layer is the microprocessor, and then we have another layer, it's the battery. So occasionally we drop one, and uh, it's true that occasionally we lose one. The way we actually run these is all through light. There's a little solar harvesting module on top of it. Uh, that will charge the battery, then the whole system will reset and boot, uh, and then we can actually program it by flashing light at it uh, with a certain pattern uh, as a way to communicate to it. And then once that's done, then the radio fires up and we can start talking to it. We are working on even smaller versions of this that would be maybe on the order of a fraction of a millimeter, uh, maybe a third of a millimeter in, in size. And ultimately, we'd like to make them small enough that we can place them in cells, biological cells, so we can actually start measuring things inside while the cell is doing its you know, biochemical uh, processing. As Michigan engineers continue to miniaturize computing technology, the implications of how they might be used and help us understand the world in which we live seem huge. The data is messy. I mean that there are missing data, there's corrupted data, the sensors are biased, they lose their calibration. The government, universities, companies are collecting data and they're just storing it.